I come from a not a, not so great of a life. My first probably 16 years. Um, you know, growing up as a, like a little kid, you know, eight, it's like six, seven years old. You know, wasn't bad by any means. You know, uh, typical you know family life. I lived with my mom. Uh, I didn't really know my dad, but I had a stepdad. And you know, life was all right. Um, never really a big church-going family though. But when I was nine years old, um, my brother, he, who I was very, very close with, uh, he died in a car wreck. Um, and once that happened, you know, everything, you know, kind of went downhill. Um, my mom took it really hard, and she. She, she almost like lost her mind, it seemed like. And my whole family just, it looked like they were falling apart. And it was when I was nine and I didn't really know how to react to it, you know? I mean, my brother had died, so I was crushed. But then when I started to think about, you know, how, how, how this will affect, you know, my family and stuff, I never really thought about that because it never crossed my mind. It was always just, you know, I don't have my brother anymore. But, you know, in, in the weeks and the months following, you know, me and my mom, we got really strained. We started butting heads a lot and in high school. Um, you know, a couple kids, you know, just kind of got me into a bad scene. And, uh, you know, I started going to parties and I started drinking quite a bit. And at the time, it seemed like that is how I, that's how I ditch my problems. Because I go out and I drink and I feel good. I feel you know, I don't, nothing, nothing seems to affect me. I'm having fun. And, you know, it just kind of hides away my emotions. And you know, never did I think that this was bad or anything. I thought, you know, this is good. You know, until I kind of started to see a negative side of me, a more angry side that I knew that was because of this. So I tried to get out. And it was hard because I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't want to disappoint any of my family members. So I tried to do it by myself and you know I didn't have I didn't have God to rely on I mean he was always there but in my mind he wasn't there because I never had gone to church I'd gone maybe on Easter and that, those were the only times I'd ever go and you know in, in my mind God was non-existent you know maybe he's here but uh, he's not done anything for me ever so why should I even trust him so I tried to get out on my own and it just, it got so hard. I guess I think I was addicted, I got addicted to it. And I just needed it and needed it. And you know, it was like quicksand, like like you try so hard to get yourself out, but the more you try, the deeper you sink. And that's what happened. I started drinking again, and then the drinking wasn't satisfying enough. I started doing drugs. It started off, you know, not so bad. I mean, drugs are bad no matter what, but it was the lesser kind. But even those just w wouldn't satisfy at all. It just it was just an ongoing cycle, and it would just get worse and worse. Eventually, until I hit rock bottom, you know, I would steal from my mom. I would take money that she would give me for lunch, and I wouldn't eat lunch. I'd go, I'd go buy pills with it, and it just it was so bad, and I was so isolated. But my problems would be solved, and then it got to where my problems would still come out, even then. So I had no solution and my problems were still here. And to top it all off, I was addicted to probably four or five terrible, terrible drugs. One night I was at this party and I think it was probably towards the middle of my sophomore year. Um, I was at this party, you know, just living my downer life, just sitting on the couch and messed up on all kinds of stuff. And I meet this girl who was there to pick up a friend and I started talking to her, and she was in one of my classes, so we started talking a little bit. And then, you know, we kind of we kind of hit it off. And, you know, we, so we started going out, and she she told me that she goes to the bridge. She was like, I'd really like it if you came one time. You'd probably really like it. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, great. This is another church. This is where, you know, you go and dress up in a suit and tie, and they preach to you about how you're going to hell. And there's nothing you can do about it. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll be a good boyfriend. I'll go with her, you know, sit there and I'll never come back again. And then when I came here, 
and heard Chris talk, it was, I just, I got the feeling that, you know, this might be something, I might be onto something here. Because it seems to me that at other churches, it was kind of like, oh, you don't live such a great life. You made some mistakes. Maybe you go sit over in that corner and we'll, we'll throw a Bible at you every now and then. Maybe throw a verse at you. But here it was, it was more like, oh, you've made mistakes? Join the club. We've actually got jackets. So I started coming to the bridge more, and more often. Even after uh, me and this girl's relationship kind of drizzled out, I still kept coming. I did have a moment where I asked Christ into my life. Um, I, I, I might, might not even call it asking Him. It's kind of He just, almost like He asserted Himself into my life. And that's weird because I always hear people saying that I asked for Christ. You know, He came to me, or I, I asked for Him and He showed up. Well, the thing is, is I never really asked Him to come into my life, but somehow He did. And, you know, I was sitting in my bed one day and it, my drinking problem got to where I would just drink by myself whenever I got bored. So I had stuff under my bed and pulled some out and I was going to start drinking it. And then something inside just said, mm, not today. So I thought it was like my stomach saying, oh, you, you, know, you might get sick, you know. So I put it down and then I sat there and someone told me to, had to call up Gabe. And I didn't really know Gabe that well, but I called him up, talked to him and you know, he was like, he goes, I want to, we should hang out sometime. And, you know, then I started really, really coming in to the youth more. You know, I felt, I didn't, at the time, I was like, oh, maybe it was just thinking about stuff, something. And just thought I'd call him up. And then it, I, then it hit me that, you know, maybe this is something beyond my power here. Somebody else is inter intervening in my life. And, when I told Gabe about it, I didn't go into great detail, but you know, he said it sounds like God's doing something for you. It sounds like He's got a plan for you. You know, since then, you know, like I feel like God has led me in so many great places, and He's led me to all these amazing people that I'm now associated with. And He led me to the bridge, and I can never, I can never imagine being in a better position right now than what I'm in.